Oh, morning, 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 everybody. How are you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. How are you feeling? Are you panicking? <laughs> Nobody panic! Nobody panic! <laughs> oh, dear. Another day. Another Twitter feed lighting up with people panicking. People terrified that we're going to get gazumped, hijacked or eventually let down in the chase with Pedro Porro. Cool heads, cool heads prevail, guys. I am like 98% confident that this is a done deal. As I said yesterday, I think it's just because of the, the final. They want him to play in the final. And then once that's done, you'll get the, uh, the official announcement. On a long contract, a five and a half year contract. The 23 year old will come into Tottenham. The rumours that, you know, Malo Gusto, the move from him to Chelsea, from uh, Leon to Chelsea breaks down, is another kind of spanner in the works because people are worried that Chelsea are going to come in and buy him. I don't think he would want to go and play second fiddle to a fully fit Reese James. I don't think. Uh, Potter would want the disruption to the chemistry of their group by having Pedro Porro and Jao Felix in the same training ground, the same team, with all the noise about what happened between those two and Jao Felix's wife. You know, I don't see that happening. The only thing that, that scares me a little bit is maybe the noise that Sporting are dragging their feet because they can't find a replacement. But if that is the eventual scenario then Tottenham just got to pull the trigger on the release clause and get it done immediately and then Sporting have no option I'm like I say 98% confident so everyone breathe breathe well it does remind me of that song because it's a coincidentally like the, the name his name like, sounds like tomorrow you know that song, Tomorrow? Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you, oh Paro, you're always a day away. <laughs> oh dear. What other news we got to talk about today, guys? Well, listen, here's a couple of bits and pieces for you. I don't think that the Zaniolo deal is dead. I don't think it is. I think there was a Sky Sports guy on Last Word on Spurs last night said the same thing but I was saying this a couple of days ago it doesn't make sense to me that just because we signed Dan Juma the Zaniolo is now off because we've heard that Lucas Moura his time at Tottenham's done it'd be very un I'd, I'd be surprised if you see him play in a Tottenham shirt again now whether his tendon injury is as bad and severe as is being made out or whether he's just kind of like downing tools a little bit and not interested, letting his contract wind down, whatever. The way it's been represented is that whilst Danjuma plays on the left or in the second striker role, he is somewhat a replacement, at least in squad numbers, for Lucas Moura, which makes sense. What doesn't make sense is why is Brian Hill still on the the short list of people that can be allowed to leave the club this window with lots of bids coming in to acquire his services. Bournemouth have put in a loan bid, not Bournemouth, Brentford have put in a loan bid for him with an option to buy or an obligation to buy, which was turned down by Tottenham because they're happy for him to leave, but not permanently. I think Nottingham Forest put in a bid, a loan bid. I believe Southampton have. And I believe a couple of clubs overseas have as well, one in Germany and one in Spain. And if Tottenham are entertaining this idea, then surely it must be with the view to bring in a sixth forward. Because Jermaine Jenis sent a tweet out yesterday or the day before saying the Dan Juma thing didn't make any sense because like, it's not a priority position for Tottenham. Focus on the central mid, focus on the right wing back, focus on the defenders. And whilst I agree it's not a priority position, you can't really make the argument that we don't need support in our forward line when 
the vast majority of games, certainly since the World Cup has finished, but even before the World Cup, we have had literally no options off the bench when we play a 3-4-3 because of injuries, illness, or some version of absenteeism. Richarlison's injury proneness is, has been in, incredibly frustrating. Decky, recurring injuries. Brian Hill either wasn't used at the start of the season because Conte didn't fancy him. Then when he was brought in, he played well. Then immediately rotated out again because of uh, an injury that he's picked up. Sonny's had his injury problems. Lucas Moura has barely played a minute this year. So we've had six forwards in the club, but really only three of them have been fit at any one particular time, for the most part. So to say that we didn't need Dan Juma is bonkers. To bring Dan Juma in as a replacement for Lucas Moura, and then to also let Brian Hill go on loan, is bonkers, unless we have someone else lined up. And I think Zaniolo could be that guy. Zaniolo was apparently supposed to go to AC Milan. AC Milan didn't have all of the money to meet the conditions that Roma wanted. He was willing to take a pay cut or lesser money than what he could have got in the Premier League to go to Milan, but Milan haven't got the money to do it. So that's on ice. Zaniolo had the money bid, the correct money paid or offered by Bournemouth, but Zaniolo didn't want to go to Bournemouth to take part in a relegation battle. So that's on ice. Maybe, just maybe, Tottenham have the correct mixture of money and opportunity for Zaniolo. But it's a deal that will probably, in my opinion, come down to a deadline day, 10th or 11th hour situation, depending on a whole bunch of other you know, uh, ingredients and variables coming to play at the same time. To me, I think I would be very frustrated if I was Brian Hill. The same thing happened last summer. That His loan out for development was kicked. The can down the road was kicked all the way until the last couple of days. He had a deal arranged to go to Spain and Conte was happy for him to leave, but because suddenly we couldn't get the deal done for Malinovsky in, Brian Hill's future was sort of unsettled and unclear. In the end, nothing happened. I feel like the same thing's happening now. It's almost like a situation where Tottenham are happy for him to leave on loan, or kind of happy for him to stay, but he's clearly bottom choice. But he's not a priority. There's other things to be sorted out, and so we'll get to it if we have time at the end of the window. And whilst I can understand that stuff, you know, you have to, at some point, you have to put things in order of priority. At the same time, if you're Brian Hill, it must be a little bit disrespectful the way you're being treated. It'd be easy to feel that way at least. Because it seems like your development is the last thing on anyone's mind. And yeah, we'll get to you when we can. And to be honest, we're not we don't really care if you go or stay as long as we can get someone in that's better. And you know, there, there's lots of people out there that are better than you. That's the way it comes across to me. And I feel a little bit sorry for the guy because when he has played for Tottenham, he's played full of heart, full of determination and good effort. And I think he deserves a little bit more, I don't know, a little bit more uh, love than the way these loan deals and transfer situations are always pushed to the back burner. But we'll see what will happen. I still think, though, Zaniolo could be on or somebody else could come in. If Brian Hill can find a home at the last minute and we can find time to bring somebody else in last minute. But the idea of bringing in Dan Juma and that Lucas Moura and Brian Hill are essentially gone from the club for all intents and purposes doesn't make any sense to me considering our injury crises and how they've shaped up so far this season. Don't know what else to say, guys, apart from there's nothing else. Porro's on this way, hopefully. We'll see what happens with the forward line. I've heard little whispers that against Preston North End we might be struggling up front again. Harry Kane and Richarlison and Conte are all apparently unwell today. This is the last thing you want. I don't know if that fever that Harry Kane had has turned into something different. 
and has kind of gone through a few players in the club or a few members of the squad. But you might on that basis see Dan Juma get his debut against Preston tomorrow, which will be exciting, interesting. He could play on the left. He could play up in the second striker role. He could play as a straight-out striker, depending on who's fit. We'll get to that one when we get to it. Apart from that, I wish you a wonderful Friday. Stay happy, stay healthy, and keep calm. <laughs> like, share, and subscribe, guys. And as always, bye-bye.